Adams Furrier brought the best California wines of the day and put them against the best French wines of the day. At that stage, the wine world knew Bordeaux cheaply. So we invited the nine best palates in France over a wide spectrum. Want to go down there just to point this out? Judges have never tasted a California wine before, so they had no perception no, of not. what California was capable of. So he said, okay, I've got to put in the French wine side by like side with these Californians before they won't take it seriously. Nowadays, Man, can I have all of them by the the happens all the time. It, it was totally yeah, new. He was hoping that one of the wines would come in top five in either category, saying, hey, let's pay attention to California wine. <laughs> California wine is the top eight the Chardonnay category and Cabernet Sauvignon category, which yeah, I think blew everyone's mind. It would be just a very, very tough stuff. We won. And then on hold like this. Should have. <laughs> And all the glory of Bordeaux and Burgundy, they were competing on their on their merits. Well, it got the My East Sir Coast to say, hey, maybe there are some good wines in California. Let's start selling their wines. We owe our existence, if you will, to to the to the judgment of Paris, 1976. That's crazy. Like now we think of Napa Valley and it's like one of the best wine producing regions in the world. Have I, have I the cracked the prices code? went up. Of why oh, nobody wow. wants to play Survivor, so oh, I don't know what it's like It caused an Have explosion the on the business world. Absolutely everybody made more money. With Bordeaux, which were the Cabernet-based wines in France, there was already a classification system of the best wines in the world, and so they chose the first gross um, Bordeaux. One of the really interesting aspects was they didn't choose the most famous California wineries at the time. But his wasn't the wine I was after. They chose artisanal, family-run, very high-quality producers. It's not all about Napa. I mean, if you think about Ridge, that's Santa Cruz Mountains, which are much further south. I made the wine that was in the tasting. It was my... Let's see, one, two, is my third wine that I made here at Ridge. All oh, the famous wineries today were like minuscule you know, back the then. When you call Ridge, it's No, I still wish I had bots. Did you order Why five you cases of Zen? I go, I did. At least if you have a bot, cool, like a man. Canadian DC, somebody to try and eat in, they were trying, like, waste the killer time while they're chasing them or unhooking Every wine and stuff like that. Tasting, like every story. now and then they're goofy. You look at Chateau like Montalino, that was a wine made by Mike Kurgic, a Croatian refugee. Having, having a bot that at least attempts to help you is United much better States than a player in who's just immediately getting up a second to go down. With 35 oh God, American dollars that he stashed in the sole of his shoes. You know? So this is a guy who I put everything to try to always end up capitalize on uh, the American dream. I, I mean, they don't, like they like I said, they, they bug out sometimes, but I don't know. It was Claude Duvall's first vintage making wine and you don't get a bot. You, Enter you literally into that, have a slot that's empty doing absolutely nothing, like quite huge. literally nothing, because it doesn't exist. But if you have the bot, at least you have the opportunity. Sometimes they do so, the joke, but I'm a lot of the times they right? have to do or they do one more. unhooks, or they do, like, heels, where everyone they, in the, the business goes chases them, even if they die once fast a year, to buy even, even if they only wish a tiny, tiny bit of time. And we're talking 
hundreds that of tiny thousands bit of time is so it's, it's far better matter than of moments over these very precious bottles of wine all done sold which is why they added it because for years there never was anything in this if you were seriously tasting there you never would taste 360 or so lots but of cabernet wine your teeth would be so purple i'm in the tasting as much as it's everyone's here everybody's here can i go to the back and boom, it's Stephen Spurrier. Stephen effing Spurrier is there. The man who planned the first season and Dylan Proctor's there. He is one of the most well connected the team in California wine system. This guy is the smoothest out of the Great seeing you guys. Always a pleasure. Of one of the wines from the 1976.
of uh, Pinot is, is the same thing. It's the ballerina in the room, but the trends it like on it shows it exactly what the producer what, wants you to see. However, you know, because of that, that it, you see every bit that's of another shit thing that well. takes into consideration as well. It's hard to make fine I'd be curious to see out of Pinot. If there was like a big picture in it. credibility and experience okay, behind them to, to give this any sort of weight. Uh, sorry, too sleep. Sub Toast Garden is a uh, fellow master sommelier. Honestly, what I used to do sometimes is I couldn't sleep. Most hospitality and business and restaurant visions and minds. He, for like the last several years, I find running that to be in bed. I find that all the dance restaurants, and he's now resident like he's of Bar Taco. Bed, Laura Manic like is asleep. joining us for the tasting. Pork like buzz here in New York. Like She's also bit. a fellow master sommelier, or phenomenal like taster, badass so businesswoman. Like doing like homework Michael Engelman passed his master sommelier exams on the first time the with the highest the score. This guy then, is an animal. He has got one of the greatest resumes of any master sommelier that I know. So we have Aldo Sam. Best sommelier in the world. Really, most of the time in those uh, cases, people don't. These wine directors for Le Bernardin. It's usually more so. A like three Michelin star, four star New York Times restaurant. It's the DC on, on Deflect. What I think of is Eric repairs the chef, and it's widely considered one of the very best restaurants in the world. Pascaline Le Peltier. Pascaline is one of the most respected tasters. She's originally from France. She's one of the biggest supporters of the natural wine movement. She is very much what a lot of young sommeliers look up to and aspire to be. Uh, Arvid yeah, came here to the U.S. from right Sweden. He kind of um, came out of nowhere, uh, won know, I, I the best sommelier in the really world competition the last year. Everybody's like, wow, who is this guy? Trying to leave, though, just like Lastly, we have Sarah Thomas. Sarah is a like sommelier at Le Bernadette with Aldo. She is points. a rising star. And I had a killer she tell brings me once a little bit of a more need fresh my perspective to a chat, tasting not, like not this. In the game chat, but Those in are among Twitch the best tasters there are in New York, and for I, sure, in not very, the country. Like, so. I'm like, we're going to try to make this as well-rounded as possible. Female, male. And Master then he came in very angry and self and he didn't need my that doesn't mean points. anything because these people are brilliant. One Swede, and, uh, two French people, Well, there's, three there's more than he said outside of that, but that was like the main thing. And Austrian. He didn't they have a really great perspective of what points. the world of wine is like and because like, they tasted Domaine de la Roma Conti and they tasted $10 bottles of Monterey Pinot Noir. Sometimes you get a chance to be a fly on the wall in the room when amazing things are happening. You don't even realize what kind of weight they hold. I know people are weird with their details. We've been a little secretive about oh, the tasting, and that's kind of on purpose. Very strange. We assembled this group get because oddly, you guys like, are about it the best Sometimes of the best. Of, like, this the is a blind tasting. They, they it's all Pinot Noir. But I've also we're had not some people you ever, you trying to assess where it's coming from or anything sound. like that. We're not trying to guess and vintages. It's not that kind of wine tasting. It's more just, I want to get honest opinions on the wine the without seeing the labels and know where it's coming from. Honest or just, be truly objective with the wines. At the end.
end of this, tasting this wine, which is 